Hello everyone, this is Joe, Four Soft Corners here. And for today's video, uh, we're definitely gonna take a little bit of a detour here, I guess, if you could tell from the title, both in um, the cards I'll be showing off and um, just the topic or the discussion that I'll be having a little bit. And um, I mean, either if, if anybody, you know, doesn't even click on this video, because they don't think it's for them or um, made it this far and decide that it's not for them. I, I fully understand and um, I'll probably be back in a couple of days with another video just about, you know, pickups or vintage baseball and just normal baseball discussions, um, baseball card discussions. But um, for anybody that does stick around and listen, I mean, ultimately this will all it's all just part of more of my backstory, I guess, and my um, story of why I started YouTube. And, um, you know, just get to see some new cards that are a passion of mine. And then um, if you stick around to the end, um, there's uh, what I feel are some pretty cool autographs in these sets. And um, I have some of those to show off then. So. Um, so first I'll just lead off with the cards in general. Um, so I've been getting more and more into non-sport cards and again, um, I'll, I'll wrap that around and tell you why then eventually. Um, but ultimately these are just, uh, I showed off some Harry Potter cards before, which is a movie franchise I love. And then this is from the show Psych, which is a TV series that I loved, um, so this show came on the USA Network, and it was on from 2006 to 2014. It was on for eight seasons. Um, I think it originally debuted following, or before, I, I guess it might have been before Monk. Um, actually, I guess it was, I don't know which way it was, but um, I believe it followed Monk, um, which is probably a show more people might be familiar with, but... Um, so if anybody's not familiar with the show, I mean, it was basically in the same vein of your, there's a murder mystery to solve every week. Um, but, well, I mean, that's usually more of a serious or drama type genre. This um, was a comedy and was lots of different pulp culture references and was just made to be funny. Um, so I just always enjoyed it. Um, the sets themselves are from the first series was from 2013. Uh, well, they're made by Cryptozoic. Um, the first one was from 2013 and covered uh, seasons one through four. And then the second series was from 2015 and covered uh, the last four seasons from five to eight. Um, I'll just, if, if anybody's not familiar with. Um, Cryptozoic, these cards are just fantastic. Um, just the quality of it, just the gloss, just the feel of the card, the stock it's on is just, I feel, far superior than anything Topps or Panini does. And you'll see with the autographs then, I believe they're always on card. So um, you'll see more of that then. So um, these first ones are from the second series and these are character cards. These are the six main characters. Um, and these are just on more of a foil stock. And have kind of like a shiny refractor finish. And then the rest will be just the two complete sets. Alright, so... Um, on to the topic I want to talk about. Um, as you can see from the title and... Uh, before I say anything, I'll just want to say, I mean, obviously I'm in no way a professional. <laughs> um, I'm just speaking from my own experiences and own, um, you know, ways to deal with things. And um, obviously if anybody's having any real um, serious issues or problems, I mean, just seek help from friends or family or any professionals, doctors, um, places you can call. Um, just because, like I said, I wanted 
this is something I wrestled with for a while. I kind of, for weeks or months, kind of wanted to make um, a video about this. Um, then I thought not many people are going to actually hear it. But um, like I said, ultimately it just lends to my story. And um, I think it's something that... I'll start flipping through here. Um, so they just have um, some scenes from the different episodes and then the back have little descriptions so I thought that's pretty neat but um just mental health and dealing with anxiety and stuff in general I think is just something that we as a society like I'm including myself just everybody in general um I think there's more that can be done just as far as supporting anybody who comes out and says that they deal with anything or um for anybody that that doesn't um just maybe helping to negate some of the stigma that's you know involved with whenever anybody says that they have any kind of issues or dealing with um anxiety in any way because i feel like just everyone just tends to think of it as a negative thing and that it's a bad thing um just call people crazy and ultimately I feel just being more supportive um go a long way because I feel like it's something that's I said um just dealing with myself a little bit um and just seeing the effects you know on others um just something we could do better at of helping people um so just a little bit of my backstory um so when I was younger growing up I mean I always had friends and stuff but I was always just like kind of shy and quiet and an introverted introverted person um but as I grew up and stuff I definitely um became more of an extrovert and you know was no longer quiet or stopped you know wouldn't talk or anything like that but I mean I still just sometimes like that social awkwardness I still have where I mean sometimes if I just call to order food from somewhere or um you know you're in a store and just have to ask somebody for help like I almost run through, like, I take a minute or two sometimes to run through in my head just the conversation I'm going to have or what, you know, they might say back and then what I'm going to say just because I have that little bit of social awkwardness yet. Um, um, so ultimately, um, I don't know, Matt and Tyrus, if you're watching from the card story, um, I just did your uh, video response for why we started YouTube, um, I guess this kind of adds into that a little bit. Um, I think a big reason for me was just to overcome those fears a little bit and just put myself out there. Um, like I said, I have watched content in the hobby for, I've been on YouTube since like 2013. So, I mean, I used to, I did it from then just to watch box breaks and stuff to watch what the new products were. But within the last uh, five years or so, have done it to you know take in the content and learn about you know different sets and just see what people are showing off and what they have um but I still kind of had that social awkwardness where I wouldn't comment on stuff and then eventually I started doing that and then pushed myself even more um to make my own content um So that's where I'm at today, and um, it's really been just overcoming those fears and everything is kind of therapeutic in a way. Um, it definitely seems more natural now, I mean, but I still have moments, and if anybody's watched my videos, I, I ramble on way too long because I don't know where to end sometimes. Um, there'll be long, awkward pauses just because I'm 
you know, thinking ahead in my brain what I want to say next and trying not to mess up. And then, I mean, there's times at the end where I messed up my outro <laughs> many times, but um, for me, I guess part of it is, like I said, overcoming that fear, just leaving it in there because it's all just me and I just want that to be authentic and, you know, just put myself out there like I am and I'm fine with the mistakes and everything like that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, take a drink here quick. Um, so like I said, not only just that so social awkwardness, but, um, I mean, the biggest part about any of this, just to realize, like, is this <clears throat> just realizing that you're having, you know, problems or the self-awareness, because I probably went for the better part of 10 years. Um, so not only just the social awkwardness, but like I have... Um, a lot of uh, obsessive compulsive tendencies and um, when you think about it there's just so many interactions in a day between you know work and just your drive back and forth to work um, sorry to interrupt but this is the last of the first set so this starts the second set here now um, But, you know, like, in your drive back and forth to work, like, if somebody cuts you off or you get stopped at a light for longer than you want to or it starts raining, there's so many outside interferences that we have, excuse me, no control over. And sometimes it just, like I said, I went on for probably better part of 10 years and not just maybe being aware or just being ignorant to the fact that thinking it was just, you know, part of my job and what, it was just normal to, you know, not realizing that I was having anxiety, like dealing with anxiety about it. Um, and then a lot of it was just being expelled outwardly and I would just get angry and yell and curse and stuff like that. And just really as it went on and then <clears throat> just could tell that it wasn't normal or healthy behavior so that's really the biggest step is just becoming self-aware and just realizing um and then I reached out to a family doctor and got some medication and I did some um counseling for a little bit um so like I said I just wanted to make this video on this topic to even if one person um you know watches this and like I said I'm gonna follow up after this part with um kind of how I use it as therapy sort of um collecting cards is that's how it's gonna tie into here um if even one person kind of you know feels the same way but doesn't you know feel comfortable in saying anything but just got you know some comfort in hearing that somebody else deals with it or you know learns from the card aspect of it just another way to cope with it um then I just feel like it was beneficial to you know put myself out here like this and just talk about um and the part of it is just um from my own selfishness maybe in a little bit of way just because I find it um, therapeutic to talk about, so, um, just having a platform, like, just to be able to talk and feel, I mean, most, anybody that's watching this is, shares at least the same hobby as me, um, and who knows from there, but, um, just being able to talk about it is therapeutic to me, um, and just put it all out there instead of hiding behind it or anything like that. Um, so like I said, definitely with the, from the aspect of the, having the obsessive compulsive tendencies, 
like I said, there's so many things out of our control that we are faced with in a day um, that we have no control over. And um, like I said, sometimes that can be, <clears throat> we just get very anxious, can lead to anger, can lead to just almost just a crippling effect that it has um but when I come home and if I come down to my man cave in the basement here with my cards I can I mean I went through and I put all these cards in numerical order and then I put them all in a binder in numerical order um if I go through a stack of cards just that I want organized and I sort them by all by player or all by set or all by team like I can I can use that to I may not have control over in the outside world of all these other things but I can have control over that little piece of something and it can be a powerful thing to just to feel that and to feel um like I said so many things are out of your control or may not be in the order you like but to be able to have that power is just it's very special and one of the main reasons why I enjoy collecting so much is it's just an outlet to I mean obviously cards are great <laughs> um, but in sports I mean is always a great outlet of something to watch but um just in general and all together it all just to me just um it's just a great outlet and it's just a place to have that control and order in my life um and then on top of that why I've been drawn so much I think to the non-sports aspect of it is because <clears throat> I've always been a person I can probably think back to 20 years where instead of watching something new a new movie a new show I will just always fall back on the same shows over and over again um my two biggest um shows I'm guilty of doing that with I guess I'll say are The Office and Seinfeld um where I don't even know how many times I've probably rewatched those um obviously I would love to collect anything but there are no set there's like one Seinfeld card from the I think 2012 Topps American Pie set and then I think there might be there were some DVD promotion cards or something for The Office but other than that there aren't you know full sets so but excuse me, um, just <clears throat> the same way with being able to control and have that order with the cards, now I will say, like, at times, I mean, I was reluctant to watch, like, Game of Thrones, and my one friend kind of made me, <laughs> um, and I'm glad, you know, I ultimately did, and if you don't ever take any chances, and watching stuff you know you're never going to find anything different but ultimately I always revert back to the same things just because there's the same comfort in that like I'm not going to be surprised I'm not going to watch something that I think sucked and then I thought well that was just a waste of time why did I even you know spend the time watching that um but you know the scenes I mean, I'm going to watch some of the episodes of this show like 20 times, but whenever I do watch it, then it's going to, I know it's going to be the same thing's going to happen. The same jokes are going to happen at the same time, but there's comfort in that and comfort in knowing there aren't going to be any surprises or everything, you know, isn't going to like everything is in the same order. There's just a comfort in that. Um, so that's why ultimately, like, collecting some of these non-sport sets in cards has just been, like, doubling down on that. And it's just been, I don't know, really fun. And I feel really rewarding. And, um, 
there's the back of these ones. Um, like I said, something that I find just to be therapeutic and beneficial to, you know, just dealing with anxiety and all these outside things out of our control. All right, so I apologize for that. Um, it was a little tough to get through. Like I said, um, ultimately, I, I enjoy putting myself out here like this just because it's all my backstory. It's all, like I said, leads to kind of the reason why I started my channel on YouTube just to, you know, overcome those fears a little bit and put myself out there. Um, but it's still, I mean... I guess there's evidence it's still tough to talk about and still that's what makes it like I said the hardest part is just becoming self-aware and you know admitting you, you know you're not just feeling right or you're having problems and then just seeking that help so um but that'll be it for now on that um so anybody that did make it through the 21 minutes so far um so the first, in the first series, I believe there was either 10 or 11 autographs. And the second series, I think they were up to 27 autographs. And in both series, there's a couple, like, what was kind of always cool about the show, even in the first, you know, four years or so, maybe it took to like the second or third year till there were more. Um, but they always seem to get like, in some some of them were bigger characters, but like guest stars that were, I just think pretty cool and most known for, you know, other roles. <clears throat> um, some of the ones I don't have. Um, so from the first series, there's, uh, Julio White was in two different episodes who played Urkel. So he has an autograph and, uh, Ali Sheedy from the breakfast club was in, um, she was in several episodes. Um, so she has an autograph. I don't have either of those. Uh, uh, George Takai from Star Trek was in an episode. He has an autograph, I believe, in the first series. Um, so, and then in the second, um, there's a Val Kilmer autograph. He was in one show. Um, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of, you know decent sized celebrities that were on the show uh here are some of the ones that i picked up um <clears throat> this is billy zane like i said just the design of them and being on card autographs and just the stock and everything in the card i think they're fantastic um so bill he's obviously i feel most known for uh, his role in titanic so i thought that was a pretty cool one Um, here's uh, Diedrich Bader it's, I think that's a really nice autograph there um, I know him most for he was on the Drew Carey show um, he was the neighbor on, in the movie Office Space which um, you know had long hair and a goatee and everything in there but um, and then I, I think in research I found he I think he does a bunch of did a bunch of like animated um you know shows that he was the voice for so um just thought that one was kind of cool uh, this is dana ashbrook um he's most known i feel for he was pretty young at the time uh he appeared in twin peaks the original twin peaks which I know has a pretty large cult following in itself. Um, I did end up watching that then a couple years ago, and I did enjoy it. Definitely got a little weird, but I um, thought that was a cool one. This one I really liked because... Um, so this is Jimmy Simpson. Um... So this one I thought is cool because he, um, so Bloomsburg University is about a half hour from where I live here and that he attended, uh, I believe majored in film in, at Bloomsburg University. So it's kind of cool just having that tie in with him 
going to a local school. Um, he's one of the McPoyle brothers in Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, he's in a couple movies over the years, and I believe he was in, I never saw it, but I believe he's in Westworld. And then just from seeing his character, you know, in shows and, and movies, it just seems appropriate he signed over his face like that. So um, I thought that was a really neat one. Uh, this guy was more of a, had a recurring role in the show. Um, it's Kurt Fuller. I definitely, there's a decent amount of shows and movies he was in. I definitely know he was in um, uh, Ghostbusters 2. He played the coroner on this show. And I'm not sure how many episodes, but I feel like he was probably in 15 to 20 episodes or so. And I thought this one was just really, I mean, it was his character was just, a, he, like I said, he was the coroner, but he was definitely always creepy. But so I thought it was cool with the inscription, stay creepy there. And so these are two main characters, I believe, were in every episode of the show. This is Kirsten Nelson. She played the chief. Um, I know I've definitely seen her in other things. I don't know any of the popular things off the top of my head, but just always liked her character in the show. Like I said, all these are on card, so I just think they're really great looking. And then lastly, and I thought this one's really cool because it tie into the baseball movie, but <clears throat> um, the main character is Sean Spencer, so... This is his dad, Henry Spencer, played by Corbin Burnson. Well, obviously, from Major League, um, L.A. Law, and lots of other things, but... So, definitely thought that was a really cool one. All right, so like I said, for anybody that did stick around, um, this isn't going to be like a normal <laughs> thing I'm going to go into on here, but um, like I said, maybe for my own selfish reasons, just to talk about it, and then just, you know, in the hopes that um, just putting any of this knowledge out here, or any of the ways that I deal with it, um, could be any you know, therapeutic or helpful to anyone in any way. I just, I don't know. I just thought it was worthwhile making. So, uh, if anybody has any comments, leave them below. Um, and I'll see you next time. Be back with some normal content, but, um, thanks for sticking around if you did and I'll see you next time. And just remember any card can be a great looking card, even if it has four soft, soft corners. Thank you.